there was one comment made by Ricardo that inspired my stream, and he talked about how he was feeling demoralized. And so my my critique here is not of Ricardo in, in particular. I'm critiquing that sentiment, which is so widespread among many people who were once heavily involved in politics, and then politics did not go their way, and so they, they left politics. So if you are feeling demoralized, and you say it's ostensibly because of the direction of American politics, it has nothing to do with American politics, right? You're feeling demoralized for eternal reasons, right? If you get out of touch with reality, right, reality bites back. It humiliates you. It slaps you around. There is no rational, self-interested reason to pay attention to national politics unless you enjoy it. But if you have an exaggerated sense of your own prognostication abilities, if you have an exaggerated sense of your own ability to change things in politics, if you have an exaggerated sense of how much uh, politics can change America, then you're going to feel demoralized, right? So I have my weaknesses, right? I can lose touch with reality through, through experiencing adulation, all right? I had, had a young woman who adulated me over the past few weeks and it just completely lost my head. So the attention of pretty young women, uh, attention in general, uh, anything that uh, feels like adulation, all right, very easy for me to um, lose, lose touch with reality. And Ricardo says, by demoralization, I don't mean feeling depressed or hopeless. I mean that I can't discern the truth of what's happening in public. And that's exactly what I talk, want to talk about. When you're clear, when you're in reality, when you are honest with yourself, you will be able to discern what's going on in, with other people, all right? And either if what they say makes sense, or if it doesn't make sense, you'll recognize that they're either lying, self-deceived, or trying to manipulate you. It just becomes really clear. There's no inherent rational basis that we should be concerned about uh, uh, Mike Benz, Frame Game Radio, Richard Spencer, Nick Fuentes, Luke Ford, right? None of us have great significance for, for America. The only reason you should be concerned with anything we say is because it interests you. And then if you develop an exaggerated interest in these personalities or things that they say or do or in the wider body politic, and then you develop an exaggerated sense of your own abilities to discern political trends, then you're going to feel let down and demoralized and think, oh, you know, I can't understand America. Well, of course you can't understand America, right? The world outside of us is an incredibly complicated place. There is no way you can fully understand it. There are just way too many variables. You'll only get demoralized if you have an exaggerated sense of your own ability to make sense of that which is way beyond our ability to make sense. We can kind of discern some, some general patterns, but when we do so, we have to be incredibly humble because there's just you know, so much diversity, unreliability, so many things going on in, in America, just America, let alone the world, that we will never understand. So we're only going to feel demoralized at our own ability to discern the truth if we have an exaggerated sense of our ability to discern what is true and what is false in matters far beyond our ken, where we can't, we simply cannot understand right, everything that's, that's going on in American politics or any part of American national policy. There's just way too many variables. And a policy that may seem great to us one moment situation changes, there may be all sorts of circumstances that are completely outside of our understanding, and the policy that we thought was great would turn out to be disaster, right? Uh, I didn't support the invasion of Iraq in 2003, but I, I really hoped that it would be a success. I, I really hoped for, for, the, for the best. I was buoyed up and excited by many of the, the positive developments in the first few weeks of, of the war, and and then it just turned into an absolute disaster. I voted for, for George W. Bush twice, and I think he was one of the, the worst presidents in American history because there are just way too many variables. So if I'm honest with myself, right, how, how vulnerable I am to uh, the attention of pretty young women, how vulnerable I am to attention in general, how vulnerable I am to uh, adulation, all right, if I have that, that keen sense of, of my vulnerabilities and how easily I want to fly away from reality and enter the world of daydreaming. And there's adaptive daydreaming and there's maladaptive daydreaming. Like we all have a soul, we all have a spirit, and we all soar off into dreams that have absolutely nothing to do with reality. Right? For some of us, it might be playing for the San Francisco 49ers. I occasionally have daydreams where I'm covering the San Francisco 49ers at uh, Sierra Community College, which is where they trained in the summers during 
the 1980s when I worked at uh, K High K Hill Radio, and I go down to Sierra Community College, and I'd cover their their training camps. And occasionally, I've had dreams where Bill Walsh calls me into the scrimmage and says, "You know, I want you to carry the ball," and I carry the ball into the end zone. Uh, for some reason, in my dream, I'm a I'm a m- member of the San Francisco 49ers, whose uh, athletic ability was finally seen by Bill Walsh. All right, that's a dream that's completely removed from reality. And having that as a dream, right, there's nothing inherently maladaptive about it. But if I spend hours of my, you know, waking time fantasizing that I'm going to play in the National Football League, obviously that's maladaptive. So what's the difference between adaptive and maladaptive is if it starts taking a toll on your relationships.